Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Our story began in the southern city of Erdeni, in a time of crisis. The princess, Callista Galtres, has gone missing, and no one seems to know where she has gone. We also discovered three future heroes. An adventurous gnome with foliage in his hair named Glimkey Tree Fellow, an artistic tiefling with bovine features named Clay Campbell, and a gossipy noble with a flair for the dramatic named Fonalin Vadok. These three individuals were brought together by fate and a near brush with vehicular manslaughter, and decided to share what they know about the missing princess. They hatched a plan to meet later tonight and exchange their information. You already said all this. Ah, right. Sorry. On with the story. Come gather round, travelers, and sit on the stoop. We'll tell you a story about Bard Soup. Three lovable scamps in our traveling troop. We'll tell you a story about Bard Soup. Hello, and welcome back to Bard Soup. This is episode two. I am your dungeon master, Zach Meikle, and I am joined today by three beautiful hunks of celery. Hunk number one, Prima. Hello. <laughs> hunk number two, Shannon. Hello. And hunk number three, Jordan. Hello. Are we going to try maybe and do that one once more and maybe say, hey, <laughs> you complained, you were complaining about me all week, and I didn't have a chance to introduce myself. And you just say, hello, hello, hello. So, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. What, is, what, is, what are we supposed to do? Uh, all right, let's talk about know. this. <laughs> what do we want to do for the intro? I think, I think this is perfect. This intro right now. This is intro right now. Is how this intro right now. This, no, no. Power we're through, currently in it. And this should stay in. None of this gets cut. Because now everyone we're knows us editing. and the level of chaos that we bring to the table. So yeah, now you can yeah. start your intro. Perfect. Well, <laughs> as we rejoin our future heroes in the city of Erdenine, the sun has exploded, which is a nightly occurrence uh, in the world of Zav. And darkness has fallen and we rejoin uh clay and glimkey in madame fauvemont's tailor shop i believe you were kind of just had gone up into clay's room a uh, room she rents above the tailor shop and glimkey the first thing you would notice is that this is not meant for inhabitants it's not meant to be a lived-in space uh there are several broken mannequins there's piles of uh you know just like yards of fabric that have been like piled up into corners it is very clearly a storage space that mm -hmm. is doubling as a loft and you see uh anything that isn't tailor related there's also uh, uh there's like a bed and some you know like a little dresser with you know some clothes sticking out uh and i imagine clay that while there was once uh, a great deal of art supplies in this space it's probably a little less than it was you know, even a few days ago, because I imagine a lot of your art supplies have been relocated to Betla House, the artist guild of Erdeny. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask last time, hmm. uh, so right now, Fonalyn and the lady she was with just left the tailor shop and we're upstairs. Yeah, they left maybe five, ten minutes ago. The uh, sun exploded shortly thereafter, a process uh, known as supernova, which is then replaced each evening by nova as the sun is reborn. Uh, and yeah, so you've kind of just been left, and the two of you have kind of just made your way upstairs. Oh, well, this 
it's a, a nice space you have up here. Uh, yeah, make yourself comfortable. Here, I kick some shit out of the way and put some like cloth on the ground, like a futon kind of. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's very kind. So obviously, um, we have to find our way back into uh, the Sapphire District later. So I, <laughs> you know, I'm. You seem very confident about getting us back in there. Oh, i yeah, I've been there once before. It was. It was, uh, and we were there earlier today to talk to the guards. <laughs> we were, yeah. <laughs> I, I can understand you're in an emotional state. So, uh, <laughs> what? How do you feel about this? This lady was it Vaynar? Lady Rumpus. I think she knows something about the Albers, so I think it's a good place to start. Wait, who? <laughs> <laughs> lady Rumpus. That's how she introduced herself. Now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Has Glimkey already forgotten the plan? <laughs> oh, the yellow... Right, 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 right. I'm sorry. I thought I was Rumpus. <laughs> no, she's Rumpus. You're Rumpus. And ah, I'm Rumpus. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. I was getting confused again. <laughs> what time are we meeting her again? I don't remember. She, she said tonight? Tonight? Yeah, I it's need a refresher. What? <laughs> it would really help if she was still here. <laughs> Why didn't we just get into her carriage and go with her? Oh, well, I think she was trying to hide this uh, this meeting from whomever she was with okay. there in the shop below. So I think this is a bit of a secret rendezvous. Okay, well, I guess we should head out then. Cause... And... You have, a, go. <laughs> you have a way to get in, or are you just walking back over that bridge we were at earlier? Uh, yeah. Last time I went, we went through the sewers. I think that way should still be open. I'm sorry, we're going through the the what now? Yeah, there was a there's a whole sewer system. It leads right into the Sapphire District. Ah, okay. That that sounds pleasant. We're talking like this is like a like a water water only situation. <laughs> kind of sewers are we um, talking about here was there was there <laughs> i don't remember i think the details are not that important I, if that's the way in then perhaps that is the only way we have yeah it was i would say not the stinkiest sewer uh in the world it was not clean either there was definitely you know some some stench some stink some you know it's it's very much gray water uh in mm, there but yeah you know, it's it's not so bad. In a city that can create a waterfall that pours endlessly into the city itself, they found a way to mostly manage the sewer situation. Hmm. Not every wizard gets to make beautiful arcane works of art. Sometimes they make the sewers run a little bit better. That's fair. And that is their, their contribution. Nice. I want to get more into the logistics of the sewers later. <laughs> oh, and you will. <laughs> Follow us on Patreon for a whole <laughs> one-hour deep dive into the Erdenine sewer system. So my question for the two of you is, what are you bringing with you? Oh, geez. Well, hmm. What do we need to bring? I guess if I have my, if I'm still carrying around my whole pack, I think um, it's probably safer to leave that here, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I uh, I guess I'll, I'll just take with me what I need. Um I don't know. We're trying to be a little sneaky here. Maybe I could yeah. take off this plate of armor. I don't think I need that. <laughs> Are you bringing your uh, your sword or shield, or leaving that all behind as well? Perhaps I'll, you know, I'll I'll, I'll have a little. I'll bring a a dagger along with me here, a little a little dagger. But um, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to get into trouble. You know, yeah, of course. <laughs> any more than. <laughs> Then we need to. I mean, like, you were down there. Is there anything that we should be worried about? No, you're good. I'm bringing all of my normal stuff with me, I guess. Oh, like you're kidding up. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I misread this. Um, <laughs> as I watched Clay... Uh... I'm strapping my mace to my back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she kind of gets up as I've like... I guess doffed my my armor. <laughs> I look over and see that happen, and uh, immediately 
crawl back in into it and spend the next <laughs> 10 minutes donning my armor. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sorry. I, I thought this was a sneaky affair. You're looking like you're prepared for anything. So maybe <laughs> I should, should be as well. <laughs> Excellent. So the two of you uh, take off your armor and then proceed to put it back on. <laughs> And you go down the stairs into the main uh, main shop area of Madame Fauvemont's. Uh, she's gone home for the day, uh, so you leave through the front door. You have a key, so you lock it behind you. Uh, above you, the uh, the two moons are glowing with the faint afterglow of the sun that has disappeared. Uh, you see that there's little specks of green and sapphire blue kind of... Uh, cosmic stardust just floating amongst the stars above and you make your way through the streets of the silver district these narrow narrow streets of the silver district until you get to the wider streets of the gold district the sound of the ocean crest falls gets louder as you make your way and before long you are standing on a street that walks right along the waterfall and you see that there's Glimkey. I think this is probably the first time being in this exact part of the city. You see that there's houses kind of nestled right up against this waterfall, and it's just pouring down. It's it's almost deafening. And Clay, you see nearby is a sewer grate. You see that it has been cordoned off. There's a few posts that have been erected and just some, some rope that has been strung up around it. Is there any guards nearby? Give me a perception roll. Six plus three, nine. Nine. You don't see anyone. Streets appear to be uh, quiet for the time being. Is, are there any signs? Hmm. Signs? What kind of signs? Like, uh, like... like, don't enter or like this place is closed off for whatever reason <laughs> i would say it doesn't look like it there's just these ropes that have been strung up around it i'd say from where you are that's like all the detail you can see hmm. okay and, and this is where you you were hoping to go through yeah this is the way i took last time can we like get a little closer sure okay <laughs> You walk up, and Glimkey, you see that there is a large sewer grate, uh, or at least I suppose there was a large sewer mm -hmm. grate. Uh, you see that there's this hole in the ground. There's a large metal ladder just leading deep down into the into the ground, and you see the edges of this this circle look like they've been uh, melted away. The metal kind of twists and bends, and like kind of almost like a, a flowing nature to it. It kind of is flowing down into mm. this hole. Was was this your doing, Clay? Oh yeah, it looks like uh, the gate's still open. <laughs> so, so I'm assuming, and I kind of like uh, get a little closer to it. That this this is your handiwork. Then you you melted through this this grate here. Yeah, we had to open this gate. I'm glad we don't have to do that again. Can I just like take the ropes off and go in? <laughs> well, hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> Clay, I would, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to be straight with with me. Are we doing something illegal? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, because this is definitely how I got in last time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Because <laughs> nothing Clay <laughs> did last time was remotely <laughs> illegal, I'm sure. Clay, as you reach down and you start to... Uh, unfasten this rope a voice from a nearby alley speaks up and says hey what are you doing uh and you see this large kind of pot-bellied guard kind of is rubbing sleep out of his eyes he steps out of the alley and you see yeah it looks like he was probably kind of dozing a bit but you did not hear him with your nine perception check oh and uh he says you're not supposed to be messing with that People could fall in, you know. Oh, that's okay. We won't fall. We're just going into the sewers. Don't mind us. <laughs> no, I think I have to mind you. Uh, that's kind of the whole reason I'm here, is to make sure people don't go into the sewers. Oh, we'll be okay. We'll be careful. 
Uh, okay, that's great. I'm, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm not actually worried about your well-being. I'm worried about why you're trying to go into the sewers in the first place. And I mean, like, listen, you see the ropes? Mm-hmm. Those are kind of there to make sure nobody gets hurt. Uh, you I know, knew it. I, I don't need, I, they don't need me for that. <laughs> I'm here to make sure that the people who, you know, melted away the sewer grate a couple days ago don't go back in. I see. <laughs> and glibby has got this... this oh. <laughs> like mouth agape head turning look on his face back like you said <laughs> it wasn't illegal <laughs> I think Clay starts sweating <laughs> <laughs> sure do I know if there's any other sewer grades around here I mean you don't know of any off the top of your head but you know you are aware of uh that this town has probably many sewer grates you know probably if you wander around uh, you'd be able to find one okay i'm like okay i guess i i i'm like okay and then we walk off <laughs> we walk away <laughs> have a good evening <laughs> okay bye bye sir says, yeah yeah all right well <laughs> stay out of trouble Thank you. We will. <laughs> and uh, you watch him kind of, yeah, he like wanders back into the, uh, the alley from where he, where he came and uh, the two of you make your way down a few blocks out of, out of earshot. Well, I guess that way's closed. Then I'm not sure how to get into the Sapphire District. Wow. Okay. Clay, I've got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said it wasn't illegal. Now, I am not opposed to doing illegal things. I just don't want you to lie to me. <laughs> I didn't know it was illegal to go into the sewers. Ah, <laughs> uh, feel like you did. Um, next time, give me a heads up so I can just be prepared, you know? A little bit. We just need to be on the same page because then, you know, if that guy came and talked to us, then I, yeah, I can help you out a little bit. Maybe bend the truth around it. Okay, okay, for sure. But I mean, hey, maybe maybe we can find an, another sewer in, entrance. I mean, there's probably plenty now. This is a big city. Lots of poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time we had to get the pink stuff to, like, melt the grate. I don't know if it's going to be easy to do that again. The pink stuff? Yeah, there was... There was, uh, that's why the grate was gone, I guess. We had oh. to melt it down. Hmm. Okay, so we have to find a new grate and some more of this pink stuff to get in, eh? Mm-hmm. And then Glunky kind of like pokes his head back out looking. Is that guy still sitting there? Give me a perception roll. Mm-hmm. That's not going to be very high. Nice. Six. (laughs) Yeah, that's okay. Uh, He rolled a three on his stealth check, and he is sitting on top of a barrel, just at the edge of the alley. Nice. Okay, so he's just... he's Okay. Okay. Well, hear me out. Mm -hmm. What if we go back? This guy... I mean, he didn't really put up that much of a fight with us going in. He just told us not to. I feel like we could... We could probably get by. You know, I could, we just I could, I could cause a bit of a distraction, and and maybe you could just sneak on down, and and I'll be right behind you. Okay, sure. Let's try that. Okay, and let's wing it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I start walking back towards the grate. Excellent. Perfect. Uh, Glyphkey wants to sprint past you. Yeah, you're basically taking like two strides for each of hers, and uh, yeah, you make it in front. Yeah, I gotta run by, and I'm gonna shout at the mans. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, 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 man. Uh. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> uh, I think you're ugly. <laughs> Give me a deception roll. <laughs> Uh, oh hell yeah 10 <laughs> he squints his eyes at you and says no you don't okay well that's true damn it 
his chiseled features saw right through it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sneak into the sewers while he's talking to this man? Uh, sure. He is fully looking at Glimkey, <laughs> who is standing between uh, the man and the or between yeah between the man and the sewer. So you may attempt to, but he is basically <laughs> fully looking at the open hole in the ground. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I won't do that then. Am I standing behind the man? He's in between me and Glimkey. Uh, no, like we'll say he's like in an alleyway, and you're kind of just like up the street a little bit. Glimkey ran ahead. Okay. I'm like, well. <laughs> what I, I, I waver. I waver away. Sta, sta, sta. Okay, oh, okay. Hey, okay. Listen, man. Okay. Yep. Uh, name's Reggie. What's yours? You're gonna. You're gonna. Re- Reggie. Um, Keith. Yeah. He holds out <laughs> this like kind of thick hand with these hairy, like you know, black hair on each finger. He says, "Nice to meet you, Keith." Uh, you too, Reggie. Um. Yep. Here's the thing. Okay, I'm sorry for what I said. That was obviously a lie. Oh, I get it. People are uh, feeling a little tense these days, you know. Princess is missing. It's uh, bad for us all. Yeah, yeah, we're all a little riled up. I, 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 I'm sure. I mean, if they got want to be watching a sewer grade at 11 p.m., no, I'd rather be in bed. No, I, no, I can imagine you'd you'd rather um, be out, you know, making a name for yourself, right? Right, Reggie. I mean, who? What? How? Who? Who put you here watching the sewer? I'm my boss. Who got? They put you on sewer duty. Yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> want to be making name per se. I'd rather be, you know, making love with my wife, if you know what I mean. Oh, Reggie, that's. I mean, you could do that every night. <laughs> no, I can't because I'm on sewer duty. Okay, well, okay, that's true. Um, you. Well, okay. Hear me out. What if? <clears throat> Yep. What if mm-hmm. Reggie was a household name? Uh, you you know how we're going to get there, Reggie? I, I don't think I really want to get there, frankly. You know how we're, we're going to get there, Reggie? We're going to jump in the gun, so to speak. We're going to save the princess, Reggie. Jump in the old crossbow. You no, know? no, no, no. We're going to save the princess, right? I mean, everybody's on edge. Who who doesn't want to, uh, <sighs> you know, know Reggie for saving the princess? You're going to be at home. Every night, make love to your, to your <laughs> wife, and not My watch wife. in the sewer ever again. Oh, and it's simple, so simple. How we're gonna do this? How's that? You're gonna keep watch mm-hmm. of the sewer while me and our friend go through, <laughs> and then when we save the princess, we'll let them know you were integral to this this plan, <laughs> and then. Everyone's going to be like, wow, they couldn't have done it without good old Reggie's help. <laughs> Give me a persuasion roll. <laughs> so by watching, the su- by watching the sewer, you will no longer have to watch the sewer. And I got, I rolled an 18. <laughs> 18. <laughs> Plus 4, <Okay>. 22. <laughs> so <Okay>. good. <laughs> he is like kind of, he seems like kind of amused by you, uh, you know, and as you're kind of talking, you're starting to make you're starting to make some sense. You know, the household name, at home every night, no more sewer duty. And he says, "All right, um, this all sounds pretty good, but I kind of have to ask what your business is in the sewers because the other night, I don't know if you heard, but the princess went missing." And the next day they found this big old hole in the ground and they think someone went into the sewers and they maybe, I don't know, kidnapped the princess or something. I don't know how to explain that away, to be honest with you, but rest assured. Well, I'm not asking you to explain that. I'm asking you to tell me what you're doing. Those two things are not related. (laughs) How I know that is a secret. (laughs) Oh. Okay, that's cool. But once again, my question is, what are you trying to do tonight? So what I'm, I said, hey, Reggie, you and me and and Clay now. Oh, shit. (laughs) 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 We're going to say, we're going into the sewers to save the princess. We're going in to save the princess. So this is actually at all not related to the nefarious thing that you mentioned previously. And is actually a good thing that we're doing. So we need to go in the sewer to save her, not to take her. That's where I think some lines were crossed. 
No, no, I, I'm actually getting all that, believe it or not. I think the main thing I'm asking is for some specifics. Like, mm. what are you going to be doing in the mm -hmm. sewers? Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. accusing you of trying to kidnap the princess, because right. guess what? She's already gone. So if you're trying to do that, you're a couple days too late for that, buddy boy. <laughs> but what I'm really trying to figure out is why you need to go into the sewers. I'm kind of on board with this whole plan. I just think that, you know, if you say, oh, we're going to go uh, put poison in the water supply, and then tomorrow everybody wakes up dead from poison, that uh, I probably need to put that into a report. But, you know, I'm just asking for what your justification is. That's all. We're investigating how the princess went missing. Yeah. we Okay. That I can work with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what, <laughs> what Clay said. <laughs> yeah, Cl gotcha. Keith and Clay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, you kids have fun out there. And, uh, you know, <laughs> don't try poison in the water supply because uh i'll bust you i would never do that yeah all right uh well in that case uh have fun out there like i said i'll see you see you in the morning or later tonight or maybe never if you drown in the sewers that was all the same to okay me. well it was okay. a pleasure to meet you reggie i am looking forward to accepting our medals um when we come back with the princess all right. If you find her in the sewers, then uh, I'll be mighty impressed. I'm not going to lie. Well, yep. Well, yep. Wish us luck. <laughs> uh, good luck. And uh, you make your way over to this uh, this rope and you, you pull it aside and uh, or like, you know, kind of duck under it. Clay steps over it. And uh, yeah, you uh, see this cold iron ladder leading down into the sewers of Erdenine. And you set off. You step down onto the first one. And then the next, and uh, with each subsequent step, the sound of rushing water above fades away and is replaced by the sound of slowly moving water below. And you uh, kind of step down onto uh, the edge of a walkway that is kind of in this large tunnel that goes in either direction. And uh, a second later, Clay steps down off the last rung, and the two of you are in the sewers below. Okay, I'll be honest, Clay, I should have probably planned that out more. I think I gave away a little too much. No, I think it was great. <laughs> okay, well, as long as you think so. We're in the sewer. Let's. Yeah, start, that's. So. Let's lead, go save that princess. Lead the way, old chap. <laughs> okay, I lead us into the Sapphire District. Yeah, uh, two things. Uh, <laughs> Clay might not realize this, but the last time you went through the sewers, your destination was to the Ruby District, uh, <laughs> which is different. Uh, no. <laughs> but you are a resident of the city, and you have at least a general knowledge of the topography, of the like aerial structure, like the outline of this city. So you have, like, a sense of where you're trying to get to. You know, like, subconsciously, you're not trying to get to the Ruby District. Uh, so I'm going to have you make a survival check as you attempt to navigate these sewers and lead the two of you uh, to something uh, good. <laughs> what a weird sentence that was. I'm trying to lead you two to something good. 15. A 15. Would you believe that is exactly what you needed? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you uh, know you need to go north and you're kind of like I need to go directly north and so you kind of uh, start to pick out tunnels and there's occasionally uh, these like um, grates these great walkways that span across to like other sides of the of the, of the of the sewer tunnels and the water is a little gray it's a little dirty um, it's does seem mostly to be though like a, a water runoff and less of a uh, poop sewer if you will Thank that's the God formal goodness. medieval term poop sewer <laughs> um, and you kind of spend probably the better part of an hour kind of choosing between different forking paths uh, at one point you hear just this dripping like creeping noise from like a, a side passage and you're like nope not that way and you, uh, you go a different one and before long you find a ladder that you are pretty sure uh, will take you where you need to go and you climb up it and given the nature of the city 
the layout of it, where you started and where you're trying to get to. This ladder is probably three times as tall as the ladder you climbed down. Um, you are trying to go more than 100 feet higher than uh, where you were before. And you get to the top rung and you uh, you are standing underneath a, a big old, um, like a manhole cover, essentially. Can I open it? Yeah, you push up, and it's a little uh, little stuck, you know, but it's not fastened. Uh, the people of the Sapphire District aren't in the habit of breaking into the sewers as much as the people of the gold or silver or copper districts are. So you are able to push open on this, this cover, and it slides out of place, and you pull yourself up, and you are, once again, in the Sapphire District. All right. There we go. We're here. Okay, well... That worked out pretty well, but do you remember where we were supposed to meet her? Um, I think she said Berthold Manor, Berthold House. That sounds right. But I don't know. Uh, this is only my second time <laughs> right. in this district, so I'm not quite sure where to go from here. And as Glimke's like sliding the manhole cover back into place, like, okay, well, I guess... We start looking. Um, yeah, where can I are look we? around? Do any of the uh, the like surrounding area? Do these manors like have signs or like addresses? Yeah, um, a lot of them. Uh, you look around. The street here is wide enough for two, maybe three carriages to ride That's alongside unreal. each other. Wow, uh, <laughs> it's just this beautiful, smooth, like stone street. Uh, you look around, and there are. Various uh, manors and these estates with these huge yards and these, you know, beautiful brick walls surrounding them. These creeping vines that go up them. Uh, the street itself is lined with these ever-burning uh, lanterns that kind of keep this these these uh, city streets lit at all times uh, throughout the night. And uh, you kind of hear off in the distance the sound of the uh, the falls, kind of just off in the periphery. And you walk over to a nearby uh, gate. And see, yeah, there's a little a little bronze placard which states the name of the family who lives there. And what is this? What is this name? Is it Berthold? Uh, the name on this one would be uh, Crowen House. C R A W W E N. C R A W W. Nice. No, no, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> this is if this is anything like what it's like in Dwells, we usually just branch all of the the family names together in alphabetical order. So if I just continue on to the right, we should be at Bernal Manor, right? If this is similar to that. Of course. Yeah. You think it's in alphabetical order? I have no reason to believe it otherwise. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go to the next house. <laughs> yeah, you uh what does the next off, house say? You set off to the words the next house, and it is a bit of a smaller, very nice still, but kind of a more compact, smaller yard, a uh, little less fancy. And there is a, a sign out front that says Gamanche House. With a G? With a G. Okay. Well, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the sewers. <laughs> This is literally impossible. <laughs> <laughs> if I look down the street, can I see like carriages or like people or anything like that? Yeah, it's late, but it's not like midnight late. It's, you know, uh, maybe nine getting, oh, but you spend a little while in the sewers. I say like maybe closer to 10 or so. Ah, uh, shoot. So there's a few people like going for like moonlight strolls. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Couple guards. Okay, not talking to them. Ooh. <laughs> nope. Despite your appearance, uh, the two of you are kind of, you know, you are you didn't fall into the sewer water. You didn't get, you know, half eaten by a gelatinous cube or anything like that. You look poor, but not poor enough to draw attention as you're kind of standing there talking and walking down the street. Hmm. Okay, well... I mean, how big is this district? We could be here all night. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could we could try ask somebody. I'm assuming there's an, is there any shops in this district? Is there a way to get a map of the of Erdenine, of the city? Yeah, where's the welcome center? <laughs> yeah. 
That would probably that would probably be near the entrance to the city. Aye, aye, aye. You know, back near the the city gates, uh, and the shops would all be closed for the night. There's, you said there's some people. You said there's some people walking around. So there's some people walking and talking. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's approach this fine looking couple. <laughs> Perhaps okay. they'll have an idea. You see this half elf man. He's kind of stocky he got a stockier build he's got this messy brown hair kind of like the boris johnson look where you think it's probably intentional he's walking with this uh this young human woman uh she's got blonde hair and the fantasy version of a spray tan and uh you approach him and what do you say uh uh good evening uh uh friends <laughs> <laughs> good evening uh uh, I, I I don't want to bother you. Uh, then for the best of uh, both of us, perhaps you should not. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> sorry. I, I'll let you leave if it's any trouble. I, I'm sorry. I just had a quick question. Uh, the woman says, Ulrin, please, let us entertain the man. And he says, all right then, what is it? Um... Uh, very simple. I, I'm assuming you know the, the area um, well. We're just looking for a friend's place. Uh, we've gotten ourselves turned around. We're looking for... Sir, Clay, what was it again? A b- Berthold house? Ah, 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 I should have guessed by your diminutive proportions that you are a friend of the Bertholds. <laughs> yes, points off. Uh, this is a... Three blocks that way, take a left, four blocks up that way. Can't miss it. Nice estate. Bit modest, but, uh... Three blocks that way. Somebody write that down. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Three blocks. (laughs) Three blocks that way. Four blocks that way. That way is which way? (laughs) Just up the street. Can Sir, can you draw a map? (laughs) I can, but I will not. And, uh, the two of them walk off into the night. That's fair. (laughs) Okay. Let's head in the direction that he pointed in. Clay, what is with the people around here? <laughs> is everyone like this? People like this come into the tailor shop quite often. Um, Jeez. That's just how they are. <laughs> yeah, that's surprising. Because back home, if you get in a conversation, you'd be uh, you'd be fighting to get them to shut up. But these people don't want anything <laughs> to do with you. Yeah, let's hope uh, Lady Rumpus is more... Uh, better conversationalist <laughs> uh, so a small interaction with her uh, I believe she is <laughs> so the two of you begin to follow the directions given meanwhile at the estate in question at Berthold Manor funnel in the ride back to Berthold Manor was uneventful you had a rather brief dinner with Lord and Lady Berthold, the Viscount and Viscountess, and you have since retired to your chambers. Was there anything you wished to ask of them or discuss with them during either the carriage ride or over dinner before your rendezvous with these two strangers you met at the tailor shop or under the wheels of your carriage, as it were? Yeah, um, Lady Berthold... I rather wonder if you might know anything about um, Lady Electra Voon of Sunfall. Hmm. I can't say I'm familiar with a House Voon from Sunfall. Admittedly, I am not overly familiar with the, the nobility of Sunfall. It's a rather ignoble city, if you will, in many ways. Uh, not quite like the splendor of Erdenine. Uh, that being said, I, I can't say that I'm familiar with uh, a Lady Electra Voon or House Voon at all. Mm. Insight. Is she telling the truth? Give me an insight. Okay. Um, I'm just realizing I haven't opened my character sheet yet. <laughs> Psychotic behavior. <laughs> An hour into a recording session. <laughs> okay. Well, I haven't had to do anything yet. So, 21. She seems to be telling the truth. Okay, yeah, it'd be a weird thing to lie about, but I had to check. All right, and I just wanted to check, um, yes. this Lung Crusher fellow, is he in the carriage with us? You can call me Crombeck. Lung Crusher, shut your ears, please. All right. No, shut them, please. Are they shut? 
Oh, he's very good. Um, Lady Berthold, I rather wondered, is he sort of, you know, is he like a shared bodyguard situation? Or is he like my bodyguard? Or is he like your bodyguard? You know, I would never presume. I'm just clarifying because this morning, you know, I realized we were in rather a rush to run to the tailors. Which, by the way, thank you tremendously for this splendid gown. I think I look quite stunning. I realized it was sort of left ambiguous. Um, yes, no, he is employed by House Berthold. Um, and with uh, the intention of protecting myself or yourself on the occasions that we venture out into, uh, well, I guess anywhere is dangerous these days based on what happened to you. So, uh, yes, he, assuming he is not engaged elsewhere, uh, he would be available to accompany you should you set off on your own. Good to know. Uh, so you return and you you hand the dress to Fallow and she uh, is quite taken with it. She loves it. Kind of just keeps chattering about it for the rest of the evening. You know, she attends to you and helps you get ready for bed. And around 11 o'clock, uh, I believe, which was the set upon time, you get the sense that you should probably get to Geddon if you're going to make your rendezvous. Yeah. I head out to the garden completely made up, like full, full face, wig on, daytime clothes, but like my cloak drawn very tightly and furtively around me. And I I think I, is there anywhere in the yard, is there like a shed or like a, is there a hedge maze? Oh my God, please tell me there's a hedge maze. (laughs) Oh, of course there's a hedge maze. Oh, hell yeah. The only problem is it is built for gnomes. (laughs) So the hedges are no more than four, maybe five feet tall. Okay, I think I go to the center of the hedge maze and I crouch down and maybe like the top of my wig is like slightly poking over the top of the hedge. (laughs) Excellent. And I just wait. I'm like, they'll know where to find me. I gave perfect instructions. So yeah, you crouch and you wait. And the two of you, Clay and Glimkey, you kind of are following the directions that you were given. You wind your way through the streets and you see a... A, a sign for Berthold Manor. There is a wall that surrounds the estate and a iron gate that is closed currently. Now, Clay, remind me again, did she say to go in or? <laughs> I think she said yard or garden. Mm, Are mm. the walls around this house also gnomite? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> The walls are definitely built with a little more uh, privacy from the outside world in mind. I'd say that they're Mm. maybe six feet tall or so. You're kind of like, you can kind of go up on your toes and just peer over. I want to do that. Yeah, you kind of prop yourself up and you peer in and you see this immaculately groomed yard. There's a a fountain depicting a who's who of nautical creatures. There's a little dolphin with some water spitting out of his of his blowhole and there's a couple of tortoises or sea turtles and uh, uh you know some starfish very nice uh you see uh like a simple flower garden that's well cared to these weeping willows and uh off to the side kind of in the the corner of the uh of the estate you see a hedge maze. uh the hedges are about four feet tall and sticking uh out of the center of it you see a white poofy wig <laughs> cool um <laughs> So I I can see I can see Fonalin. You see a wig. Okay. <laughs> that that must be her, yes. Yeah. Uh here, let me boost you over the wall. Can I do that? Yeah, by all means, yeah. Toss me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Glimkey weighs not a lot and you easily heft him up and over. Whoop. Okay. Cool. <laughs> How do I get over? <laughs> you can climb over, it's only six feet tall. That's true. Can I climb over? Yeah, I'm going to have you make an athletics check, please. Okay. Do you want me to make a dex save for my superhero landing? Sure. Yeah, please. All right. Good. Because I got a six. (laughs) I got a 16. Okay. Clay, you kind of vault your way over, clear over the wall. Uh, You land and you see Glimkey picking himself up off the ground, (laughs) splatted in the grass. And uh, kind of oh, just no. pets himself up, and uh, the two of you are inside. Uh, and as you are making your way over to the hedge maze, you hear the sound of a passing guard just on the other side of the wall, uh, and you just narrowly avoided getting spotted as you jumped into a noble's front yard. <laughs> Woo! 
this is i'm nice. imagining the most um like nature i've been seeing in the city so far 100 percent, yeah like i'd say nice. you land face first in the grass and you don't pick yourself up right away you kind of like <sighs> no i there's definitely a moment where i like breathe in the dirt <laughs> yeah yeah you get a good lung full of dirt nice that's the good stuff and uh you make your way to this to this maze um lady 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 Vader. rumpus is that you oh right rumpus sorry lady rumpus it's yes. i rumpus and rumpus Rumpus. <laughs> well done finding me i hope it wasn't too much of a bother hello no it was super easy clay knew exactly how to get here yeah didn't take us an hour in the sewers <laughs> we- um well no follow-up questions there listen i've I'm, I'm i'm grateful that you've come to meet me because i think we have rather some information to exchange um yes uh you start okay yes i will I, i'm perfectly happy to start and i will start just as soon as rumpus and she points at clay tells me what the hell is going on with this owl bear thing okay i pull out the ring and my sketches of all the owl bears again, <laughs> and I'm like, I think the owl bears are involved in the kidnapping of the princess. Okay, how do you know the owl bears? They're responsible. Okay, so this ring came from the person who was involved with the princess's disappearance, and I show her the ring. And was that person an owl bear? No, they I, they were kind of far away. This is the only thing I could really see. But there was an owl bear. <laughs> Sorry, paint a picture for me. Where were you in relation to this owl bear guy, and where was the princess? So, uh, my friend was talking to this guy to get our package, um, and that's when he grabbed the ring. And I didn't know. I wasn't sure if, like, at this point what was happening like i didn't know the princess was involved but the package i think was the princess rumpus did you abduct the princess i i don't know <laughs> you don't know i, I think it was the albers <laughs> i don't know i think if you knew that you didn't you would say so but because you said i don't know oh <sighs> It, it might have been the princess. <laughs> I've been in this city for one day, and now I'm an accessory. <laughs> <laughs> but we can find her. We can find her and bring her back. Oh my god, I came all this way and I'm going to jail. Rumpus, darling, would you close your ears for a oh, second? I'm going to jail. I'd like to talk to Rumpus. <laughs> um, I look at Clay. I mean, I look at Glimkey, and I go... Okay, Rumpus isn't listening. So, should we like turn her in to the authorities or I've already done that. Yeah, we did. We've been there. <laughs> <laughs> we crossed that bridge and we made it all the way back. It didn't take? Uh No, they didn't believe me about the owl bears. That's why we came to you. Yeah, something about the owl bears. Right, right, right. Okay, well, I happen to recognize that insignia, and I shan't say where. No, well, well but this this sounds important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I saw it on the hand of a nobleman at a recent soiree. I think. My memory is kind of fuzzy. I had some champagne, and I danced with many rich very interested suitors so i can't say for certain upon whose hand i saw it but i do think it was upon rather a nobleman and i i have my suspicions about who it may have been in fact i think i think no i shouldn't say well i think perhaps it's speculation but i think perhaps the young uh honorable lord xerxes humiliation may be somehow tied up is that a person who what Xerxes who, humiliation that's his name what do do we know who this is <laughs> can I do a, some sort of check to see if is this a common like a public figure yeah give me a uh history check nine minus one eight you are not of the nobility that should come as no surprise to you the circles that this lady rumpus uh seems to spend her time in are so far beyond your social capital 
you do not know who Lord Xerxes humiliation is. What you do know is you have spent some time around the docks and you know the crest of humiliation house sits upon maybe half of the shipments coming and going from the city. That is what you know. And I'd say nothing beyond that. Okay, so I know that they're involved with shipping and trade, I guess? Yeah, and I think being someone who spent uh, a good deal of time in Erdenin, you know that a lot of the city's wealth historically is built Mm -hmm. upon trade. It's kind of how it's made a name for itself is if you want something, you can have it brought into Erdenin. And if you're trying to get something, you can probably get it shipped from Erdenin. What what does the humiliation crest look like? Simply enough, it is a double masted sailing ship. Did I see it on the night of the princess's kidnapping? No, but it's typically on like crates or barrels. Okay maybe a flag sell them upon other things that you may have come across that evening sorry darling can you just walk me through where so you picked up who you think was the princess from where from the castle uh from the the terraces the moving terraces oh yeah that was my first time there see now that's tremendously interesting Because I happen to have been there the night the princess was abducted, and I knew there was rather a commotion because, you see, someone attempted to murder me and did, in fact, murder my dear friend, Iqua. And then I ran into, well, I ran into the prince. Is the prince the princess's sibling? No, he, he, Prince Elling Malforth was visiting. He's allegedly courting her. Oh. So it's, it's very interesting that we were all sort of in the same place place that night like what was he doing there i've always wondered when was this soiree and when did the princess go missing the soiree was the night that the princess went missing it was the night before it was the night before okay okay oh yeah because i got the letter the next day Mm. um yes interesting before yes you you both seem to know a lot of people thank you (laughs) and it seems it seems as though those those relationships are beginning to cross here. Um, so I I think it would be silly of us to assume that there is not a connection with this Xerxes humiliation. Well, I I do want to be clear. I see. I remember seeing the ring rather clearly that night. I cannot say for certain whose hand it was upon, but I'm just thinking back. He is the one who rather, you know, sort of held and kissed my hand the most. But there are other suspects. You see, it might have been on the hand of a lady, Electra Voon. It could very well have been on the hand of the actual Baron Humiliation. It could have been on Sir Clotier Keldar. It could have been on Baron Thalarun Reduc. See, you know, we've really got a host of suspects. It's hmm. just logically, I think Humiliation makes the most sense. And also this shipping connection is intriguing to me. Mm-hmm, exactly. I mean, it's, it seems as though it, it makes sense that it, it is someone that belongs to that house. Unless, I mean, Clay, you didn't see who you got the ring off of? No. Do you think that maybe they dropped it on purpose? I mean... Ooh, devious. Do I think that? I mean, it would make sense. Something to find in that area would be to belong in that house. They, they ship there, so... Mm-hmm. Clay. Yes. Looking back, kind of recollecting the events of that evening, a lot happened. It's a little bit fuzzy. I am going to need you to make a insight check. Insight insight into my own memory? Into your own memory. Uh, insight. Well, plus three. Fifteen. Fifteen. With a fifteen, what you recall is your... I don't know if you would call him friend or uh, associate Riggs. Approach this individual. They shook hands. And when Riggs pulled his hand away, you saw a flash of silver. So he slipped it off this guy's hand. Uh, That is what Riggs told you. If you think there's something more to what happened probably the only person who could tell you for sure would be Riggs Trembley. Okay, I think we need to talk to my friend because he's the one who who gave me the ring afterwards. 
Am I crazy or does it feel like the three of us are sort of like an inevitable, fated, destined trio? I mean, so far, my only connection to both of you is that I was struck by a vehicle. <laughs> yes. Destiny's heavy hand. Indeed. <laughs> it was rather a, rather, a, 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 rather a useful introduction, wouldn't you say? I mean, <laughs> you know something of my character. I know something of your resilience. <laughs> yeah, that's the, I guess that's the way you could take it. I, uh, I did come this direction looking for some sort of adventure, and it seems that it has found itself in you both. So perhaps we need to find your, your friend. What, his name was Riggs? Rig Trembly? Uh, yeah, Riggs. He was there that day. I think we should go talk to him. Okay, well, it sounds like as good a lead as any. Sounds good to me. Um, Do you know where he might be? Do I know where Riggs would be? The clubhouse or wherever? That's a decent bet. You know, it's not his only crash pad, if you will, but there's a chance uh, you will find him here there tonight. Do I have any other way of contacting him? Not really. Most of the time he contacts you usually in the form of sending Una or Patrick to see you. Occasionally, he'll leave a letter at your place if it's something not sensitive. But oftentimes, you kind of just wander in there when you're looking for work, and if there's something to be done, he'll uh, he'll let you know if there's a job to bring you in on. Yeah, I know where he might be. Let's go to meet him. Before we go... Mm -hmm. Clay, I understand your sort of entanglement here. Um, I assume you're being tormented by the guilt of your aiding and abetting the abduction of an innocent woman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and I have my own very legitimate reasons for wanting to find the princess. Um, Glimkey, what's your skin in the game? I need to know that you're reliable. It's, it's crazy because I was going to ask you the exact same thing. I was just waiting for a beat. <laughs> <laughs> You got to make the beats. The beats don't come to you. You make I, them. I see that. I'm sorry. I don't fully understand exactly why you're here either. And to be to be quite honest, I don't know why I'm here either. I would like to be part of something. You know, I've been collecting, I, I mean, for my past few months, some pretty exciting stories. And I've met some, some pretty interesting people. But, I mean... How how do you beat a missing princess? I, just, I would regret if I didn't, you know, at least try to help out. At least it would make for a good story. Hmm. Okay, uh, small rumpus, shut your ears, please. Um, tall rumpus, do we think that's legit? Is that good enough? Is that high enough stakes? Because it feels like he could cut and run, you know, at any sort of minute. I think so. He seems like a good person. I feel bad for dragging you both into this, but I would really love both of your help to find the princess because it's something I need to fix. I've been dragged into nothing. I am here of my own absolute volition. <laughs> I think we're good to go. I I think we should work together. We can pool our resources. I think we should make a pact. Okay. We can do blood, spit, or piss. <laughs> I vote blood. I was leading piss, but I can do blood. Glippy spits in his hand. I take out a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> I cut my hand. <laughs> I unsheath. So I've been walking around with a parasol. I have a parasol clutched in my hand. I click something on the base and unsheath a full-sized uh, rapier. Oh. And I instantly cut my hand <laughs> and reach it out towards both of you. I, I reach out like this and blood is just dripping out my fingers. I cut my hand with a dagger too. And shake her hand. And the folks back home are not going to believe this. And I, <laughs> I cut my hand and I put my hand in the bloody... <laughs> what? <laughs> the bloody circle here, yeah. The three of you engage in the bloodiest three-way known to the world of Zab. <laughs> and uh, three-way handshake, sorry, my bad. And uh, <laughs> seal this, this blood pact together. The Rumpus Pact. Yeah. The Rumpus Pact, as it will become to be known in days to come. <laughs> We're the Rumpus Three. <laughs> um, also, by the way, you both have hepatitis now. Sorry. What <laughs> 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 the I spring up and walk out. <laughs> what the hell? It's, it's gonna be a good plot beat later. We're gonna have to find the cure for hepatitis. That's arc Damn. two. It's like lycanthropy. <laughs> Adding that to my notes. <laughs>
Um, right. Rumpus, would you lead the way, darling? Okay. Actually, what are your real names? Because the Rumpus thing is becoming difficult to distinguish. I'm Clay. Nice to meet you. You can call me any number of names. Keith. <laughs> I'm, I've, yeah, picked up a new one on the way here. Keith, Kiki, Glimkey, Keemstar. <laughs> Okay, Keemstar, let's go. No, don't use that one. I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Glim Keith, on the way. Um, so you are heading in search of. Um, do actually before we go, do we want me to grab the hired help, or is Lung Crush around? He's been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he pops out of a uh, dwarf-sized topiary. <laughs> I heard everything. <laughs> no, he is contracted to escort you when you go out to various events. You going to the most destitute part of the city at midnight was not in the itinerary, and thus he is not around at the time being. He has probably gone home for the night. Mm. Okay. Pity. We're going to the Bronze District, I think, right? Copper District. Ugh. Oh, sorry. Copper. Oh, the copper. <laughs> <laughs> Copper district. <laughs> uh, my question then is, how are you planning on getting there? We're jumping down the waterfall again. <laughs> again, you say? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> jumping down the waterfall again? <laughs> Aim for the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the best thing to fall into between bushes and water. <laughs> Definitely choose the solid. <laughs> People stop people from going into higher districts, but do they stop people from just leaving? Oh, they wouldn't stop me. We can be your your guards. Let's go then. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, Zach, am I bullshitting? Would they actually let me through? You've never tried, but you've got no reason to think they wouldn't let you through if you requested it. Okay. Does Clay have a point? Like, is is the security more one way than the other? Like. Like, if I came strolling out of the Sapphire District, <laughs> would they be like, whoa, what are you doing leaving? <laughs> <laughs> I think you will only know for sure if you try, but I think there's probably a chance if, yeah, a guy smelling of sewer walks out of the fancy part of town, he might get some questions. Fair enough. You don't smell like sewer, thankfully, but, uh, you know. Is, is there is there any... um? flowers in this garden oh yeah there's there's flowers i would just eat I mean, can i just pick some <laughs> yeah 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 you uh you grab a handful of uh roses perfect thank you whoa roses yoink fonolin any reaction i'm looking on in like abject horror because <laughs> there's a rich there's a rich people a rich person garden those roses are probably like cultivated that's like a decades long lineage of rose and that was like you know we're growing them for prize evaluation or something and you you just pluck it and i'm like i am afraid of you now <laughs> i fear glimkey a little more <laughs> just pick the flat they're just flowers you don't respect the prize winning roses no, I, I those were show roses then by all means, we should be showing more people the beauty of the roses. No, a true agent of chaos. They're they're stuck behind a six. They're they're six feet behind this wall. I don't know. Seems like only uh, a small group of people get to look at them. Yes, that's what makes it so delightful. <laughs> and have you ever have you ever thought have you ever thought that perhaps the flowers would like to see more than just one garden? Hmm? And then I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> You walk away with the dead flower in your hand. <laughs> the recently murdered flower. <laughs> I'll put them in water. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's what it likes. <laughs> I was going to say if there's fountains, I was going to like dip some cloth and then wrap the stem so it lasts longer. Aww. If we're holding roses, they won't stop us from leaving. Oh, fuck it. I'll do it too. And I also rip a rose out of the bush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Rumpus indeed. Making your way through the well-lit streets of the Sapphire District, no one interrupts you or stops you until you reach one of the Ocean Crest Bridges, in which there are a half dozen guards stationed on it, uh, three at either end. 
and one of them is this elven man with long flowing hair and he kind of ignores clay and glimkey and his eyes lock on to Fonalin, and he says good evening ma'am going out for a stroll yes i'm going to meet nanya <laughs> and i keep walking <laughs> i like don't even stop <laughs> <laughs> he sighs rather loudly, but does not make any further effort to uh, interact with you. See, take note, you two, because it's really it's really just best that you don't engage. It's our civil right to keep secrets. You know, we're entitled to our little secrets, our little rendezvous. It's none of his business. So just just don't engage. You know, don't dignify him with your time. I just go to Glimpse. That's just how they are. That's just how they talk. <laughs> wow. So like Nanya's made up. That was like a fake thing. <laughs> oh, yes. I wish he'd asked who Nanya was because it was going to be a devastating burn, but I'll save it for next time. Oh, okay. I look well. Hopefully somebody falls for it. <laughs> yes. Oh, just you wait. Although, actually, I, I, I should introduce you when I get the chance. I really do think you'd get along with my dear friend Nanya, different from the other Nanya. <laughs> Sounds lovely. <laughs> Who's Nanya? <laughs> <laughs> Business! <laughs> and I march on. <laughs> As you cross the bridge, you kind of see the lower districts of the city laid out before you. It's quiet. It's probably just around midnight at this point now. And you kind of make your way down this great stone set of stairs until you find yourself in the gold district. And as you go, the streets get a little narrower and the buildings get a little less nice. You see kind of less guards. There's not these ever-burning lanterns that kind of line the sapphire and ruby districts. And you make your way through the, the, the gold district into the silver district. The streets get narrower and uh, you know less patrolled, darker even. And beneath your feet, do you notice that the, the cobblestone that has been carrying you gives way to dirt roads and you venture into the copper district. You start walking down these like narrow winding alleyways you look down one of them and you see a pair of glowing yellow eyes peering out at you you hear the sound of uh shouting from often uh, a, a closed up like boarded up house yeah you uh you see a couple of uh, a drunks sitting on the corner they're kind of just singing to themselves having a little little outdoor concert until clay you lead the two of them to a familiar building it's very simple uh, in its appearance, it's got a simple kind of wooden door. It's painted, but the paint is all peeling. And this is the clubhouse or the spot where you are able to track down Riggs and his crew most nights. Sorry, uh, Clay, mm -hmm. do you live in this neighborhood like normally? Oh, no, I just come here for work and yeah. Why? I put my hand on her shoulder. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely going to save the princess. You're right. You're so right. And then uh, can I open the door? You open the door. Uh, the two of you see this dark, it's no lights on, this dark space, kind of just with the bit of light pouring in from the, the moons, the natural light. Glimkey, do you have dark vision? Yep. Yes, I do. It's fifth edition. Everyone has dark vision. I don't know why I asked. Except for the dumbass humans. Not me. You definitely do. Oh, just kidding. I do. <laughs> My bad stupid humans <laughs> the three of you kind of with your dark vision even you can kind of see just the room is cast in these shades of gray no no color can be seen but you see just you know some beat up furniture there's like a couch with like tears in it stuffing kind of poking out uh you see that there's a, uh, a little bar area and there's dusty liquor bottles kind of put alongside these these mismatched glasses none of them match each other at all uh, and as you step into this room, there is a sudden and you see this shape, kind of cloaked figure, appears in front of you, blade out, kind of holding it to, we'll say, Fonalin's throat. What the? Oh, shit. What are you doing here? Why have you come? And that is where we will end tonight's session. Damn it. Is it Una? Rude? thanks so much for listening to the second episode of bard soup 
Once again, my name is Zach Meikle. I am the dungeon master for this group. I also do the editing for the episodes. I am joined by Prima Zhao as Clay Campbell, Shannon Meikle as Fonalyn Vaydark, and Jordan Johnson as Glinky Treefellow. If you are liking what you're hearing, consider giving us a follow on our socials. We're on Instagram and Twitter at uh, bard underscore soup. We would also appreciate if you gave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform you use. We're trying to grow this thing as much as we can and would love to have your support. We will see you next week with episode three. And until then, take care.